You too, what's good? What's going on? Which is your girl Simba? And it is time for another reaction. Okay, today we're checking out that. Uh, I believe it's that chapter. I'm sorry. That chapter. Y'all told me when I asked y'all something that y'all wanted me to react to. Y'all was like, y'all like the uh the longer type reactions and and things like that. And you wanted me, y'all a bunch of y'all wanted me to check this out. So. Um, this is a channel called that chapter. I've never reacted to them before never watched it But they uh, got a bunch of different type cases and things like that. Um, this is one of their most popular ones Um, it's one of the it's one on the shorter side that they have I just wanted to test out the waters to see if this is something you guys would watch and enjoy Um, this is the disturbing case of Sean great. So we first check this out. Let's get into it man simple Somebody call. If I cause any hate bitterness and then all of any of this Work on that. I ask you, maybe forgive me. Find your heart someday. I know not today, but someday. Just move on from this life. And may justice be served today. Hey, you and welcome. My name is Mike, and, Mike, and in this old video right here, we're going to talk about a guy who is just. It's absolutely disturbing and uh, pretty terrifying. This is the case of Sean Great, a serial killer who was active in Ohio from 2005 to 2016. What? It's believed he had about uh, five victims, but with nearly all serial killers, that is up for debate, my friends. He had issues with the law in the past, but serial killer wasn't on the mind of police until one victim escaped and made a 911 call in 2016. And the horrific tale Damn. of what Sean really did Wait, 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 wait. So, damn. They said the first case was 2005. So this man was getting away with it for like almost 11 years. If that person wouldn't escape, who knows how long he would have been. Oh my God, that's actually crazy. So what happened? Light. Now I'm interested. I like these. I like these. This Check. is definitely one of the most disturbing cases I've covered. So without further ado, let's get into it. Case of Sean Great. On September 13th, 2016, at 6 48 a.m., a 911 call was made from Ashland. It's a city about an hour from Cleveland. In okay. this frankly alarming 911 call, a woman tells the 911 operator she's been kidnapped. By a man named Sean Great. 911, what is the address to your emergency? I just lost street laundry mat. What is it? Or street laundry mat. What's the problem? I've been abducted. Who abducted you? Sean Great. Oh. Where's he at now? Asleep. Where's he sleeping at? In the bedroom. I'm in the bedroom with him. She called while he was sleeping, and she had taken his phone, but she was still in the room with him. She called for help, but she couldn't really say where she was, Damn. just that it was an abandoned house. She sounds, as you can imagine, absolutely traumatized. Does he have a weapon? He's got a taser. Is there any way you can get out of the building? I don't know, without waking him, and I'm scared. Oh, wow. Is there a bathroom in the house? Oh, the bedroom is closed and he made it so it would make noise. Damn. And if you told him you had to go to the bathroom, he would do something to you? Yeah, because he had me tied up. Are you tied up now? Well, I... Yeah, but I kind of freed myself. Is it his phone you have? Yeah. Damn. Are they on the way? Yeah, we have officers for sending. Okay. Please send them Are you bleeding from anywhere? Not anymore. Where were you bleeding from? You don't have to talk if you don't need to, okay? Oh, damn. You probably started moving. Do you know where he lives? No. Damn. Oh shit. I just set the phone down. I'm a smoker. 
What? Do you hear any officers outside? Damn, okay. no. I, I heard the taser. I heard the taser go off. Oh, man. That is actually insane, bro. To have to try to make that phone call right next to the person who abducted you? That is crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At one point, she accidentally triggers his taser, and she fears he woke him up. But he went back to sleep. Oh, that was oh god. Where is he? 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 Damn. The police finally found her, and it was revealed that she had been held there for three days as a sex slave. The woman, who has only ever been identified as Jane Doe, had known Sean for about a month and a half before he kidnapped her. And it was while they were having lunch together, that's when he took her. After he told her he had clothes to give her. They walked to his place, and that's when he overpowered her. So when he started pulling the Bible from my hands, I just looked up, like, curious, like, what are you doing? And um, that's when he said... <laughs> That's when he says you're not going anywhere. What the fuck? Sean was arrested, but so much more about who Sean really was and the things he had done was just about to come out. What? That is crazy. Bro, you're, you're not. He's finished. You yeah, put this nigga under jail. He got caught in the act of kidnapping, and then you find, like, that's why I don't understand, bro. There was, like, recently a case, um, actually, in the city I live in, in Jacksonville, where um it wasn't nearly as severe but this 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 white this white guy was like like hit like hit and punched and kicked on this woman in a gas station for no reason for no reason and when people looked like he and it took him forever to be arrested for one and for two when people looked into his arrest history he's like he's a registered um ex offender He's like, he's like, he has multiple accounts of battery. I'm like, and like, these people are on the show. I'm like, why are these people on the streets, bro? I'd rather you have these type of people that, that hit and beat on people and, and uh, uh, lock them up, bro. These niggas is getting like five and six year sentences. Well, I know there's like, like, like drug dealers and stuff who, who are getting 10, 15, 20 years. I'm like, bro. They sold, like, maybe some weed, you know what I'm saying, or something. And they getting more time than someone that actually causes people physical harm. Like, yeah, it's, it's drugs, but at the end of the day, they were making, they were selling it to make money. They were like, if if you partake in the drugs, that's necessarily, it's like, it. everybody's at fault. But it's more on fault of you for still taking the drug, you know what I'm saying? You get, But, like, to have someone out here just randomly beating and punching on people and they haven't been arrested yet and they still free to walk and they're getting bond and these drugs. Like, I'm like, bro, make it make sense. I'm giving someone who who, who physically assaults people on, on a daily and is a regular uh, registered um, ex-offender way more time than I'm giving, like, like where's the where's the where's the balance? Why do drug dealers get more time than these people that are actually causing other humans physical harm? Who are out here preying on people? I don't understand that. This man, it, like, bro, and they said he had priors before Shorty even escaped. Why is he still walking the streets? You see what I'm saying? Like that shit is so mind blowing to me. Sean Great was born in 1976. Sean's parents divorced when he was six years old, with his mother giving custody of Sean and his brother to the dad, though he still continued to live with his mother. As a teenager, he was described as charming, always smiling, a real hit with the ladies. However, multiple women also found him to be controlling, jealous, and violent, which is not the best mix. Facts. When he was 18 years old, Sean was arrested for grabbing his girlfriend's throat. At 23, he broke into a 17-year-old pregnant girlfriend's home, choked her, and later threatened to kill her. Why is niggas like this? You see what I'm talking about? This was before even the kidnapping. This niggas was, was choking out his girlfriend, got a 17-year-old pregnant, broke into her house, choked her, and threatened to kill her. This nigga's still walking free, but somebody who sold drugs to make some money 
is is doing 10 20 years this shit don't make sense to me you see what i'm saying eight months later he assaulted her again and her sister this time while holding a butcher knife after hiding all night under her couch which is why it's important to always check on your couches for lads with butcher knives could be sean he spent about four years in prison for that one and was released. Four years. But I literally know somebody who's doing mad. I know they're doing, uh, I think, like eight years for selling drugs. I know somebody who's doing eight years for selling drugs. This man got four. After his third arrest for physically assaulting someone. And not only did he do it to a pregnant woman. He did it to that same woman and her sister this time and got four years. Where the fuck is the This shit makes no sense to me. At least in 2003. But he would continue to have assault, domestic violence, marijuana, and alcohol charges laid against him over the coming years. And he was still and walking! More. Over the years, he would exploit people, especially vulnerable wow. women, any way he could. He fathered three children, two with girlfriends and one from a brief marriage. Court documents indicate his ex-wife once claimed, Sean said, If I can't see my daughter, then no one will. I wonder what he meant by that. Christina Hildreth met Sean in 2005, and they stayed together for about five years. And she said that after they began living together, Sean was upset her children were with him as well, and characterized him as mentally abusive for the most part. Sean wasn't the sharing type. Uh, he kind of wanted her all for himself, which, you know, I mean, he did kidnap someone, so that makes sense. For the end, it was quite true. You never knew what was going to set him off. One, you know, one minute he was happy, laughing, fine. The next minute, you, you know, he's looking at you evil and he's just out there. He had just that way about making you very uncomfortable. Your skin crawl, just, it was really creepy. In June 2010, she was assaulted repeatedly by Sean including multiple blows to the face and being this nigga this bro 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 why are these niggas still what bro this nigga had an opportunity to, to like yo bro what the fuck 2010 he assaulted her right so this is four times not including nobody else. This is four times this nigga assaulted somebody. Four times. Did the same shit within a, within a, a 20 year span. Four times. Now mind you, this was in 2010, so he still didn't even get fucking caught for the fucking the kidnapping. The kidnapping ain't even happy yet. Why is this nigga still walking the streets? He was able to still be out loose and, and loosey goosey in 2016. To kidnap. Like, bro, come on, bro grabbed by the throat. Part of her hand was also fractured. She was able to get Sean to let her go to the emergency room, and she initially told staff she had fallen. However, when Sean left her alone in the room with the nurse, she told staff what had really happened. And when the police were notified, Sean just booked it. He was caught four days later. When, get this, uh, Christina told police that she believed Sean was hiding inside her couch and police found him there. I got back from, you know, staying with my mom fuck? to go feed my cats, get in my house. I could tell somebody was there. He had run from the hospital when the police came. What did he do? He hid in the, what did he hide? He, had, he hid in the bottom of my sofa. He'd actually climbed up into the bottom of the sofa and he hid there. I had went home to feed the cats. Things weren't right. The toilet seat was up. Food was not where it should have been. How chilling is that that he was It's in... very chilling. Of course, they're starting to notice. There's a grown man crammed inside of a couch, for Christ's sakes. They're going to notice. <laughs> what he was the sentenced fuck? to 180 days in jail. He kind of laid. 180 days. This is his fourth assault! 180 days? Low for a while after that and became homeless, doing odd jobs here and there. Wow. That is, until, well. On August 16th, 2016, a woman went missing in Ashland, 29-year-old Elizabeth Griffith. She suffered from a number of mental health issues. She wasn't reported missing, however, for over three weeks on September huh? 8th, 2016. Her apartment was empty, and since last being seen at Walmart, no one had seen her for a while. On September 8, 2016, another woman 
43-year-old Stacey Stanley disappeared also in Ashland. Her family filed a missing persons report the next day, and when they found her car, it seemed like it had been driven by someone else. Wow. It would be less than a week later that Jane Doe would make that 911 call and Sean would be arrested. The bodies of Elizabeth Griffith and Stacey Stanley were found in the house Sean was arrested in. They had both been strangled to death. Prosecutors reveal gruesome details about the deaths of two of his alleged victims, including how their bodies were hidden inside of an Ashland home. Veteran BCI agent Ed Staley would later process an unimaginable crime scene. Black duct tape was all over an upstairs bedroom closet door, and there was a horrible smell. Significant odor, yes. Describe it, please. It was deplorable. Inside the closet and under a pile of clothing was the body of Liz Griffith. Prosecutors believe she had been strangled. Staley testified Griffith was naked, her body badly decomposing, and it appeared her arms and legs were tied. And on the concrete floor of the basement, another horrific find, the body of Stacy Hicks, under a blanket and piles of trash, also a victim of strangulation. Item of cloth. Y'all be giving these niggas too many fucking chances. Four times. This nigga was arrested for essentially the same thing. Getting minimal time, minimal time. You know this nigga is an abuser and they kept letting this nigga go free. Are you surprised? Are you surprised? I'm sorry to those families, yo. RIP, bro. There ain't nobody to blame but Ohio PD or whatever fucking town he's in. You let this nigga go four fucking times. That's crazy. I don't really know if it was clothing, but it was a ligature or a binding or a restraint that was around the neck of that human corpse. The suspected serial killer showed little emotion as Staley identified other pieces of evidence found inside that Ashland house of horrors and displayed for the jury, including Stacey Hicks's car keys and weapons, a stun gun and brass knuckles that may have been used against the victims. On the day of his arrest, Sean also led police to a third murder victim, Candice Cunningham in a neighboring county. While wow. in jail, Sean also confessed to a fourth victim, Rebecca Lacey. Her body had been found in 2015, but her death was originally ruled an overdose. Sean said he strangled her after she stole four dollars from him in a bar. Wow. I wonder what he does when he gets really angry. And before it was over, he confessed to a fifth, Dana Lowry, whose body was found in 2007, but remained unidentified. He confessed to killing Dana, saying it was his first kill. And he did it because he thought she was part of a magazine scam. She was finally identified in June 2019 via DNA. Wow. Sean Great would fully cooperate with police, even demonstrating how he would uh, kill these women. So this nigga knew he needed to be locked up. How does that, like he gave you everything. As soon as he got arrested, gave you everything. How did this, how does this person this 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 murderer give you everything, but y'all 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 supposed to be the police. Y'all supposed to see what this nigga is like, bro. This nigga gave y'all y'all were clueless. Police were clueless. Right under y'all noses, y'all arrested this nigga four fucking times. Nigga caught two bodies before you arrested him in 2010. Clueless, clueless, clueless. This nigga is showing you how he killed him. He don't even care no more. Wow, that is insanity. On September 29, 2016, Sean Great pleaded not guilty to 23 charges outlined in an indictment, including the murders of Elizabeth Griffith so and wait, Stacey So wait, Stan so this nigga shows you, admits everything, shows you the, and then pleads not guilty? Finally, even though he would tell the police and the press that he had done it. Sean's attorneys later filed a plea of not guilty by reason of insanity. Of insanity. They love that insanity bullshit. Sought the death penalty. 
They were already dead, Sean Great wrote to me in one of two letters dated September 28th, written in careful cursive on ruled loose-leaf paper, apologizing for sloppiness because he had to write with a small pencil. In his first letter, Great tells me about facing himself in the mirror and promises to share exactly why he did it. And that's exactly what he did in the second letter, which I found folded neatly inside the original signed copy of his indictment, the same document that lists his aggravated murder charges in the death of Stacey Stanley and Elizabeth Griffith. The charges came after a third woman who escaped led police to their bodies in this Ashland home last month. They were already wow. dead, just their bodies were flopping wherever they can flop, but their minds were dead, Great wrote blaming government assistance for taking the minds of his victims. And so he finished the job with what he calls a horrible act of violent behavior. And he says this story began five years ago when he first reached out for government assistance. But he said he couldn't get enough, writing that he received $197 a month on a food card, though many bodies receive 700 he wrote. Great uses the words bodies, victims, and people interchangeably. And the letter is scattered with Bible verses about... So you was killing niggas because you only got $197 in assistance? Oh, this nigga. Put the needle in his arm, my boy. I ain't gonna lie. About death. The defense and the prosecution both jointly requested and obtained a gag order. Uh, preventing Sean from communicating with the media, something serial killers tend to love to do. It's all about the attention. He must have been living it up, loving the attention he was getting. Uh, but they put a stop to that because he was telling the judge one thing and the media something else. Sean's trial began on April 9th, 2018. Well, this day is a good day. Mainly for all of you guys and myself. You know, hope we could just move on from all this. You know, I don't. Did this nigga just say move on? No, exactly. You know, I can't say I'm normal, but you know, I know right from wrong. No, you don't. And uh, mainly, just the uh, if I cause any hate, bitterness, and then all of any of this. And work on that. I ask you maybe forgive me. Find your heart someday. I know not today, but someday. Just move on from this life. And may justice be served today. That's the most important. Elizabeth, Stacy, and Lori, thank you for all your time. And this mess, I'm sorry for all human beings that have to listen. Hear this? Okay? Sorry. This thing is a mental patient. Can't, can't change nothing. Believe me, I would. Alright, so plead guilty and take the needle, bro. Not for me, but for you guys. You know what you did. Plead Thank guilty, you. take that needle, my boy. On May 2nd, Sean pled guilty to 15 of the charges against him, but not to the murder of Stacy and Elizabeth. But he was found guilty of them and everything else, it's unsurprisingly. Nice. On June 1st, he was sentenced to death. We, the jury, being duly impaneled and sworn, do hereby find that the aggravating circumstances that the defendant was found guilty of committing do outweigh the mitigating factors presented in this case by proof beyond a reasonable doubt. We therefore unanimously find that the sentence of death should be imposed upon Sean M. Great. Guilty on all counts. That was a verdict the jury handed down in the murder trial of Sean Great. It's not about him, it's about my mother. His mother, Stacy Stanley, one of two women killed in Ashland at the hands of Sean Great. Damn. Basically, you know, I'm just thankful that he got what he's coming to him, you know. Like my mom does deserve justice, you know. Everything he's putting on there, it's all about him. Sean, Sean, Sean. It's not about Sean, it's about my mother, about this other lady, Elizabeth, and every other woman that's in on that situation, you know. An initial execution date was set upon conviction for September 13th, 2018. However, the execution was stayed due to a pending appeal, still pending to this day. In March 2019, Sean also pled guilty to the murders of Rebecca Lacey and Candice Cunningham wow. and was sentenced to life in prison without parole. In September 2019, Sean also pled guilty to the murder of Dana Lowry Damn. and was sentenced to life in prison without parole plus 16 years. 
So he's never getting out, but are they really still- Really laying it on him. As they should. He's still there uh, waiting away for the L needle. This, I think, is up there with some of the most disturbing cases this I've ever covered. Crazy. And you gotta think, if Jane Doe hadn't made that 911 call and been rescued and then Sean arrested, who knows, he could still be out there, like, to this very day, exactly. doing what he was doing. And it's especially worrying when you think that he, he took Elizabeth Griffith in the middle of August, Stacey Stanley at the start of September, Jane Doe in the middle of September, he was, he was escalating. He was there, previously there had been years between his crimes, and now it was like weeks, a couple of days. Yeah, maybe he wanted to be caught. Maybe he got careless, or maybe he just had had that urge. Though uh, thankfully he ain't going anywhere anytime soon. That's not crazy. counting, you know, hell. Nah, banger ass video. Thank you so, so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, if you'd like to watch some more of my videos, please work away. And if you want to see future ones, subscribe if you want to. I will see. Yo, nah, he got nah. This is this is this is a, whoever recommended this channel is a banger. Now, if this if this video doesn't do too hot on this channel, I will be moving it to um the channel with Reed, my roommate. We're gonna get to reacting again. Um, you know, what I'm saying go subscribe to that channel. So if if it does good here, we'll react here. You know what I'm saying? And I'll just bring my roommate on and we'll react together. But if it doesn't do too well here, we'll move it to that channel. But if you are a fan of these reactions, they are going to come. I actually really like these. Um, and it gives you a good, it's, it's, a, it's a good discussion. You know what I'm saying? So uh, make sure you guys are liking the video, subscribe and notifications. And uh, yeah, so we'll, depending on how this video does, it'll determine whether it'll be on this channel or on my uh, channel with my roommate. But I'm up out of here. I hope you guys enjoyed. Y'all have a good one, man. Peace.